Hi and welcome back here. So today's video is all about literature review writing. Now I understand this is a very specific area of academic writing um, and it's only relevant really to people who are at the stage or are required to do it um, but it's still very useful. There is a reason, um, two specific reasons why I picked up this um, specific area to talk about today. Uh, the first one is just generally it's something that um, I have been working on for months now. Um, I also have a supervisor meeting tomorrow so videos like this help me to organize and co collect my thoughts, gather my thoughts, you know, kind of present them ready for our discussion. So it's kind of a warmer for me and my supervisor tomorrow. And the second thing is I actually am having de a desk day here today. So I'm literally like desk bound. Um, I am creating a lot of content and that in particular is for my academic community on Patreon. So the focus this month was for the task one writing of um, preparation for IELTS examinations. Um, and, you know, we've got into the swing of things over there. So um, I just have some content to create some videos um, and some material, because obviously, um, if you do know anything about my Patreon, um, we go into full video tutorials, full video tutorials where, you know, I have material to accompany what I'm saying. And I often prepare the tutorial um, yeah, the tutorial sessions beforehand. So I give my students in the community a chance to actually download the material, have a look through it and have it ready to when we have the video tutorial. So um, it does take time. Um, it's something that is, you know, uh, I put a lot of work and dedication into it and I enjoy it. This is absolutely, you know, privilege for me to be able to do that. Um, and that is one of the reasons why I love social media because it allows me to share that expertise um, and the passion I have for that expertise. So basically I'm having a desk bound day. Um, I'm here, it's me and um, this space here <laughs> on um, this wonderful Thursday. Another thing I'm fasting, um, so I won't actually um, be able to have any tea, coffee or any kind of snack or anything, which is a good thing because it um, it just refocuses my mind and definitely not having the excuse to kind of wander off and find something um, to eat um, is definitely helpful. So um, I figured uh, this specific area, uh, literature review writing, which I have touched upon, I've gone in and out of. Um, and, you know, this is more of a, again, a chatty style um, video. Um, I will definitely be doing a tutorial on literature review writing very shortly. Um, and that I will share here. Um, it's obviously there are exclusive things that I um, put in my community on Patreon, but there are also things that I like to share here and I'm happy to share with the people who um, don't have access to my private academic community on Patreon. So, um, this is these are just you know the thoughts um, and the things I want to share in terms of my experience and in terms of what I have learned from everything and from everyone so far. So I hope that's a comprehensive introduction as to you know um, what this um, video chat is about. Um, and I think the first thing I'd like to start off with is just the idea of a literature review. The idea, if you are someone who is just kind of stumbling into that area of um, academic writing and research, a literature review sounds just, I guess, in its basic form, a review of the literature in the sense that what you do is you read and you write a review on what the literature is. Now, I don't want to completely negate that and say that that is not what it is, because that does form some element of what is required in a literature review. But definitely in terms of actually, you know, a PhD worthy literature review, um, there are skills beyond reviewing and summarizing that you do need to um, develop and master and showcase. <laughs> so um, that is kind of, you know, that, that's the essence. I, I would say that's the, the starting point. Um, yes, you do need to read. And yes, you do need to summarize in great detail, basically what you have read. But I would say the summary part of 
the literature review is more for you, not for the actual literature review, if that makes sense. So, of course, summary, summarizing is a useful academic skill, and I will never, ever downplay its usefulness and its effectiveness. If you know anything about what I have um, spoken about, the Bloom's hierarchy of critical thinking skills, and I do have some material on that. So just have a dig in my channel and you'll see anything to do with critical thinking skills. There is a pyramid and you'll see summarizing is usually at the lower end, what is considered to be the lower um, level critical thinking skills, but it's still useful because it's a foundation. You need to be able to summarize information before you can actually come to analyze or critique or evaluate it. So it is definitely useful. And I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to negate or downplay the fact that summarizing is needed. But when I say the summarizing is required for you, it's because it's for your understanding and it's for you to obviously remember the key points of what you've read. Because if you think about the amount of literature that you have to engage with, it's a huge amount, especially at PhD level, it's huge. You know, you are reading, um, you know, masses um, and it's ongoing. So being able to summarize, you know, a 30 page article is an absolutely useful skill. Now you could say, you know, just having a look at this um, abstract is enough. Um, and I wouldn't disagree with that, but the abstract only gives you an insight. That's basically what it does. The abstract is kind of, you know, an outline of what is going to be covered in the article. Um, so it's a good, filter point where you think okay this is necessary or this is useful or it's not and then you decide you make your mind up whether you want to read it or you don't but from my experience and I know like I am somebody who does kind of like to take a lazy route um the abstract isn't enough into getting into more of what the article um discusses really so be prepared you do need to read like there's no way around it <laughs> there's no way around it so that's why I, I always say you know if reading isn't your thing don't do a PhD and don't do any kind of research because you have to read you have to read and you have to understand and that is where your summarizing comes in so the summarizing aspect of um, the literature review is for you it's for your understanding it's for you to getting to grasp with the key concepts key definitions, key ideas, key arguments, all of that. That doesn't mean that you're just going to regurgitate that in a narrative, in a, you know, prose and present that as your literature review chapter. You, you, that is not what you need to do. And that is um, something that is, a, you know, will give you, um, it will be a weak literature review. However, um, bear in mind that the literature review is an entire process. And it is one where you will refine and you will remaster and there is a starting point. So if your starting point is just literally um, you've written, you know, 2,000, 3,000 words, which is just essentially a kind of summary and a review of the literature that you've engaged with. I wouldn't beat myself up about it. Um, and I'm saying this because I've been there because what it will do is, um, and of course it does depend on your supervisor um, and how good of a supervisor they are, they will pinpoint things that you need to um, develop in terms of critique and in terms of, um, you know, deeper discussion and developing your voice. That's an, also another important thing. Um, another thing that you'll find is that you will be able to develop threads um, and that will take you off into directions of where you will actually refine your focus and essentially um, establish the, the gap, which is all about what the, um, the entire um, PhD is, is really. It's um, finding a gap and making the original contribution to the field, which you can't really make that original contribution until you kind of, you know, um, establish the gap and really, you know, um, know what it what is missing and how you your research is going to add value to that um, so essentially what you're saying is you know you know here's the gap 
um, here is why this research matters and this is what I'm going to do about it. So keep that in mind, okay? Keep, keep that in mind. Um, the literature review will help you establish what the gap is, um, why it matters for research to be undertaken in that field, and then what exactly you are going to do. And from there, then obviously you get your research questions. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, um, aren't my research questions done in my proposal or isn't it done at the stage where I get my upgrade? Yes, that's true. When you, write your, when you do write your proposal, um, you will have your research questions. But your research questions will either change or evolve. Um, something will happen. It's highly unlikely it will stay um, the same from the point of where you've written your proposal all the way until you actually you know, write up your thesis. It's highly unlikely. Um, you might add some questions. You may um, remove some questions. Um, my research questions have gone through a, a refining process for sure and that is all part of the process um, but the point of the research question is to grab it to keep you it's it's um your main research question and then obviously the um sub questions that you have um, they are supposed to be a gravitational pull for you to stay on focus so whenever you kind of um, start to wander off you come back to your research questions because that's essentially what your research is going to answer. And then, you know, you, you, it's supposed to draw you back. Um, and one of my, um, she's not my supervisor anymore. She was my, um, she's uh, one of the academics in the Department of, Department of Educational Research at Lancaster University. Um, she actually, uh, she says it's, the, it's an anchor. Think of your research question as an anchor that's pulling you back, you know, to focus. Um, and I think that's a really nice um, an analogy of that. So the literature review um, plays a big um, part in being able to obviously, you know, let you find the gap and say why it's important to have research in that gap and then what exactly you are going to do. And then from then on, um, you, you're, you refine or you um, produce, essentially you produce the research questions and like I said it doesn't matter if you have your research questions from your proposal for any part of um, the process up until that point it's okay because it's either going to um, just cement it I, I definitely think there will be some kind of um, uh, refinement to it there definitely will be but um, it's basically the light shining on you know what the questions are so you know because your questions are your research you know that's what your research is going to answer so it is essentially what you are going to do it's your mandate um, and these are in the words of my supervisor my supervisor calls it your research mandate okay that's you're saying you're establishing what is it what it is that you're going to do and then all from then on you go into the how how you're going to do it and then you go into the you know what it is and um you know everything else just is sequential from there so um, I hope that has made sense. And I, I think um, three further points from that that I would, um, that I've discovered um, that I'm working on still is um, the first one, like I said, you know, when you think of literature review in the sense of you just write it, you know, it's a review you do about the literature and it's kind of done. It is, it is never done until you finish your thesis write up. OK, it is an ongoing process. Um, and when you do your timetable or if you have a look at some example timetables of um, the thesis uh, structure and how long it will take, you will see the literature review doesn't have a finished date. It usually is an ongoing thing. And there are reasons for that, because um, what you will find. Um, and I am at the fourth stage of um, redrafting my literature review is you'll find that what actually can work really well is if you let the literature review speak, speak for itself rather than arguing for what you're looking for. And there's a reason for that. If you think about, if you're arguing for what you're looking for from the onset, then 
it takes a different light in what the literature is saying because then you're going to kind of mold the literature to say what it is that you're looking for but if you actually let the literature speak for itself and you know um that is where you're going to establish the gap because you see you know what's the literature saying what are bodies saying what are certain bodies and for me um actually navigating through like bodies of literature because it's not you can't just list what all scholars say, all individual scholars or researchers or, you know, experts. You, you can't do that. Sometimes you have to have a body of literature. Um, if you see what this body says, what that body says, and then you'll find, you know, the disparities um, amongst that and the gap that, you know, that it's all about the gap and highlighting the gap. And I think if you let the literature speak for itself rather than from the onset stamping and saying, you know, this is what I believe the literature says, because if you do that, you're kind of going to um, want the literature to say <laughs> what you want to say. Um, but if you let the literature speak for itself, you will see the gap, the issues, the challenges, problems. And from there, you'll be able to refine what not just obviously from the gap, what your contribution is going to be and why you know your research is important. Um, and you know, like I said, you know, the second point is that it, it is an ongoing process. So don't think of it as done. Um, because from the very first literature review you do, so the little paragraph part of your proposal and to the point where I wouldn't even say um, you finished because obviously I am not um, done with my thesis but even I can say if I was to take the the part that I wrote within my proposal and look at how far I've come now it's incomparable it really is like there is a huge difference um, and just let yourself also know that the literature review will only be as good as, it, as good as it gets at certain points and you just have to park it and leave it. That's why I said it's ongoing because for my fourth review right now, this is literally going to be the point where I'm like, okay, I'm done with this for now and I need to move on to this part. Um, and then from things I find in my data, I'm going to be able to come back and then actually, you know, um, sculpt the literature review in that way um so you know it, understand that it is as good as it gets at a certain point and then you need to leave it and come back to it leave it leave it with the intent that you will come back to it because you have to come back to it anyway you have to come back you can't just like be done um, because if if that's the case you will find when you you know come to a further stage that it's all now um pretty that it's either all irrelevant or there are huge parts of it that are no longer relevant to what it is you're saying especially if you do refine or change or add any research questions so um move on and you can come back just bear that in mind you can move on you can come back that is why um on my system here i have a system which is um specifically for my um thesis writing i have folders um, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. And in each of those, um, I just, you know, um, work simultaneously through them. Um, I'll have the uh, the introduction going on. I'll have the bits of the um, things that I feel shouldn't be in my literature review and need to go back into um, my introduction. Um, and maybe things need to be put into methods. And, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. That's what you need to treat it as a process process over the over product you know um so if you think of that obviously the ongoing process you have your initial review so that's like the you know the first kind of bit that you do that you're proud of um but then bear in mind not just about the redrafts and the refinements there is a point where you will come and you will do another review like a major let's think about it these are the major reviews don't think about the redrafting um, so your initial review, that's the, the first major piece that you produce. Um, and then you come to the point where you will have another review in light of the data that you've collected. OK, because that, that is absolutely essential because you need to see like, you know, the connection there. And that's why I talk about sculpting. Um, and then obviously the 
other major review will be the final one where you're at the you know write up stage of your thesis where you're rounding everything up and that's where you know you write you bring things together you bring in all the um things that you know are kind of like threads that are hanging um but you've got the data to support um to support you essentially and it's to support your claims and that's where you're going to really pull it in and stamp it in so you have a refined um uh sculpted literature review okay um so that is why you know the third point of sculpting it um, rather than framing if you think about if you sculpt something you shape it to kind of like fit um a form but if you frame something, so if you think of a frame, it's quite rigid. And I think that is why I said, if you lead with what you want the literature to say, then you're going to force, um, you're going to not just force a discussion, you're going to force something into form, basically, you know, but if you let the literature speak for itself and then you sculpt it you know going by what the data um shows and you come in you know you put your theory in and by the end you know the a final major um review of it before you know the write-up stage before you finish your thesis which bear in mind you know you probably aren't there i'm not there but just bear in mind that this is essentially what's going to happen um the sculpting just makes more sense because you're sculpting as you go along as you're refining as you get more data as you you know refine your research questions and you're you know molding it but if you just frame it you're forcing it um you haven't let the literature speak for itself um and you know you probably might make a lot of um sweeping assertions which i have been guilty of um and that's what I'm actually working on now, supporting claims I've made, um, certain unsubstantiated claims. Um, and by letting the literature speak for itself, um, you will overcome these things. Um, so, you know, why certain, think of why certain elements are leading you to, to a certain argument and then again that's you know kind of you establishing your gap because if you found and you know found this element that's pushing you towards um this area um and then you can form an argument why that is um what is going to be your con in, um your valuable contribution and why is it that that is important to have the research why is that um why are those elements why are they worthy of your research what are you going to add to it um based on basically you know what you've found from the literature speaking for itself rather than you speaking for it and this comes um back down to a voice because voice can be hard to get um i have spoken about voice i've spoken about you know the right of voice where um and there is a fine line um, and this is something my PhD supervisor shared with me. She said, you know, um, a lot of students struggle here where they have um, either they don't have enough voice or the voice becomes overpowering and then you end up, you know, making sweeping assertions, sweeping claims, unsubstantiated claims, um, or um, you go the other way, the complete um, other on, you know, other side of the spectrum and you just basically um, have no voice and you're just presenting basically summaries of arguments um, and um, you know that what's been said and that's what you don't want you don't want a review you don't want summaries of the literature so it might sound tricky but letting the literature speak for itself isn't just summaries because the summaries is essentially you saying this is what's been said um but what it is is you know when when you engage with all these um bodies and you like i said you get used to the actual bodies of literature which i myself that's what i'm doing um there you will see where the debates are where the arguments are 
where there's a lot of focus, where there's not too much focus, where there needs to be more research, where there needs to be more um, information, where there's too little information. That is what the literature speaking for itself is. Um, because you, you know, you, you kind of take a step back and you see what is it? What is there? What is being said? Um, and then from there, then um, when you've established, you know, you know, with the gap um, and what it is that you want to do and why it's important for you to do it, then that's when you can really like stamp down your voice. And, you know, when refining it, then, you, you know, you're going to get a strong voice through um, because you've actually let the literature speak for itself. So your voice is actually now a substantiated voice. So I would say that I don't know. I, I, I don't think of the literature review as a linear process, but I think it actually could be a, you know, a circular process. You could be a starting point and you have to go through all of this to get not to the not to the back to the starting point but essentially back to the aim of what you wanted you know but again you could also argue that it is linear you started and then now you've ended up with you know a much better refined product that is you know fit for purpose so it is you could look at it both sides really the the argument is open there um it's definitely you know debatable whether it's a circular um process or a linear process but whichever one it is um i think the key point that i think that is um worthy of taking away from this is that it is a process it's a process it needs to be refined it needs to be um sculpted and it takes time and it's something that you at some point need to understand that this is as good as it gets and put it aside move on with the intention to come back to it and re-sculpt it when you are in a better position of um, knowing things, for example, your data. So I'm going to stop right there um, because I don't want to turn this into an entire lecture. Um, but I, like I said, these are um, thoughts based on my experiences, what I am obviously navigating and what I have learned through this. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like, you know, my um, dumping ground of thoughts. but. Um, I definitely will be doing a tutorial-esque how to, how to write your literature review, um, just so that, you know, for people who kind of need to see the stages um, and how and what to do, that is coming here on this channel. So stay tuned. If you are not subscribed, do subscribe. Of course, um, give the video a thumbs up um and you'll see me soon um or you'll see me over if you are um one of my patrons in my private academic community um you'll see me very soon because i have um a lot of new content today tomorrow and over um the weekend um and if not um you will still see me i'll be back here inshallah so thank you very much for watching and you'll see me soon bye bye